Good afternoon and welcome back to my workbench where today I'm going to be finally tinning my printed circuit board that I've spent so long manufacturing and uh, then I can finally get around to using it and hopefully then I can go and do something else. So uh, I guess really the title of this is more like protecting your circuit board because uh, there are multiple ways to do it, some of which don't, don't involve tinning whatsoever. Um, so the first option I guess you have is the most sort of simplest and isn't actually protecting it at all really um, and that's just to leave it bare. Um, you could in theory just solder your components on um, and then just leave it as it is but uh, that'll corrode um, quite quickly. The uh, better option would be to solder your components on, um, clean off all the flux residue and clean off all your fingerprints etc like that, um, make sure it's all nice and clean and then just leave it uh, free free and open. Um, and that's a perfectly valid way of doing it um, and for a lot of projects that might be perfectly fine and if you're doing a, if it's just a prototype for example you may not even care whatsoever, you can just build it, you may only need it for a month or something and then you know just uh, doesn't matter. So if you're doing something like that, if it's just a prototype, then don't even bother. There's no real point. Um, but that said, if you wish it to wish for it to last, you should at least definitely clean it. Um, otherwise, you know, finger oils or leftover flux and stuff can corrode it and cause problems. The uh, next option up from that, I guess, is to use some of this stuff. Um, this is a uh, clear protective lacquer. Uh, I bought this at Dick Smith a million years ago. Um, you can still buy this similar stuff uh, from Jaker and probably just about everywhere else. Um, places like RS Components, Farnell, DigiKey, etc. They'll all sell this kind of stuff. Um, it's quite good. Um, it's sort of just like spray on. It's kind of like wood varnish, I suppose. It just creates sort of a clear, sort of varnish looking uh, layer um, on whatever you spray it on. Um, I suppose a kind of conformal coating in a way, um, but it's in a can. I'm not entirely sure how they do it in the factory, if they spray it on or it's dipped or whatever, but uh, anyway, you can buy it in a spray can like this. Um, the idea with that is you... Uh, well, there's two ways two ways of doing that, I suppose. Uh, first of all, you could just clean the board, have it like this, um, make sure it's all nice and clean, and then just spray it with this and uh, cover it like that. And then um, this stuff specifically is designed to be soldered through, so you can then put your components through the board, um, solder them on through this, it doesn't catch on fire or anything, and you just then you can just leave it alone. And if you use rosin flux um, or any other mild mild flux, um, you won't really need to clean it off. And I've, I've got f several projects and old older boards and stuff that I've, I've done that way. I've just sprayed this on to a clean board and then I've soldered my components on and I've just left it. And it doesn't corrode or anything, there's no problem. Um, the only problem happens with that is if you do need to do some rework on the board. Um, once you start desoldering components, putting new ones in, swapping stuff around, um, this stuff will sort of fill up. Well, it doesn't really burn, but the, the flux residue, you know, you the more flux you add, you keep resoldering, reheating the joint, the flux will sort of burn and it gets trapped in this stuff. So um, you may have like uh, possibly leakage, electrical leakage if you have too much burnt flux on a board, so you may have to clean it off. Um, the problem is the uh, flux cleaner or whatever you're using will generally remove this as well. So then you end up with sort of a um, a nasty sort of residue between the areas where this hasn't been cleaned and where it has been cleaned and it sort of it doesn't really work very well and you kind of then sort of ultimately really need to sort of clean the whole board off and then start again and then respray it um, which is not ideal and kind of annoying so this is this is good for one-off boards where you don't expect to be reworking anything significantly um, but it's not a great idea to do it that way if you um, you know, if you were working on some sort of prototype and you want to change stuff around or or whatever. Um, you're doing a lot of that, so in that case it probably would be best just to leave it bare um, or tin it. Um, but this is, uh, this is very good at uh, protecting a board, so you could in theory also just um, um, clean your board, solder everything on, um, clean all the flux residue and everything off and then just spray this over the top. So you spray this over the tracks, over the solder joints and everything like that. Um, you could even spray it over the components I think if you wanted to. Um, and that would create a uh, really nice sort of moisture barrier everything like that. It's not going to corrode underneath that unless you've uh, got trapped moisture or something. So it is, is important if you do do that to make sure everything's really clean, really dry um, before you spray this on. But if it's uh, 
if you've prepped the board well and you spray this over the top, it'll last a very long time. And um, I, don't, I haven't had any problems with any of the boards that I've used this on. It's um, it's really good. So that is uh, the first option. That's an option I've used for a long time. This stuff does still come in handy, but I don't use it as often as I used to. Um, because, like I said, it does get kind of annoying if you have to rework stuff and it gets, yeah, and you have to clean it all off and then do it all again. And that's kind of annoying. So I just tin the boards. And uh, there are three ways of doing that, basically. You can either do it chemically, you can electroplate it on, or you can do it sort of manually with just reflowing the solder onto the tracks. Um, so, obviously, electroplating is probably the hardest one to do. I'd have never tried that. Some people do do it at home, people with uh, large volumes of boards, or they just they want to do that. Um, obviously it's going to be more expensive, you do need more equipment. If you're going to go that route it's probably best just to get your board design sent to a board house. Um, but it's still possible to do that at home if you really wanted to. Um, the other option is to do it chemically. You can get uh, chemical tinning solutions. Um, I know MG Chemicals in America sell one. Um, I think I can I can probably buy it here imported, but it's really expensive. So yeah, I mean that's the probably the easiest way is just to buy a chemical tinning solution. You just pour that into a container, lay the board in it. It'll just chemically plate the whole copper surface with tin, and um, yeah. But like I said, it's uh, kind of expensive. It's probably good for one-off boards if you want a good quality coating, but you don't want to uh, put too much effort in. But yeah, the price is high for the convenience. Um, but the method that I personally use, and which I'll show today, which is probably the uh, overall, I guess, cheapest and probably easiest and just sort of most basic one, um, is just to tin it manually by hand, which uh, probably sounds kind of tedious, but it's actually not. Because I've, I never tried it originally, because I thought it would be uh, would be terrible and it would take too long, but I found it after doing it a few times, once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy and really simple and yeah. Um, so basically all you really need is just your board um, and then some uh, soldering paste, oh and obviously some solder. Um, but yeah, you can, uh, when I say soldering paste I don't mean solder paste, but I mean um, just flux paste basically. So this is a little tin of, um, well not a tin, but a plastic container, um, of flux paste, paste flux, um, I don't know, anyway, you can buy this on China, buy it on China, what am I talking about? You can buy it on eBay, um, AliExpress, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure you can buy a high quality brand name version from DigiKey and all that sort of place, but you know, you can buy this on eBay for like $3 or something. Um, free shipping, all that. I have hardly used any of this either. It uh, lasts quite a long time. Um, this stuff is really sticky and really um, resilient, I would say, to heat. It doesn't burn very easily and it stays on the board. So basically, um, what I do is I just take a little brush, um, you can use a little paintbrush or whatever get some on the brush and just uh, paint the entire board with it. Um, I'll show that in a minute anyway, but I'm uh, just explaining what I'm doing. So, paint that on. Um, it is, will help if you preheat the board, I guess, with hair dryer or hot air or whatever. If the board's hot, um, this will flow really easily onto it, but, you know, you can just put it on cold, it's fine as well. Um, but it's easier if the board is slightly warm. And then, you just get your soldering iron. Um, a chisel tip is the most advisable. I'm using a 3mm chisel tip. Um, bigger would probably be better. Um, 4 or 5mm would be fine. Um, you can do it with a 2mm. I have done that before. I just haven't been bothered changing the tips, but um, you know, it's a little bit trickier. Um, a knife tip, which is uh, one of the ones that looks like this. And I'll probably have to show a close-up photo of this because it may not be obvious, but you can get a little sort of a knife tip thing, and originally I thought that would be the most obvious and most useful way of doing it, but turns out it's actually a lot harder, so um, those are good for other things, but not uh, not really this. So basically what I do is I coat the thing in the flux paste, um, just get, the, uh, get a nice big blob of, of solder on the uh, chisel tip, and then you just sort of wipe it on. And this flux here, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't evaporate, it just stays on there, it just liquefies and moves around, but it doesn't burn very much. Um, it does create a lot of smoke, so you will need to do this in a well-ventilated area, or have a fume extractor or something, um, which I'll be using. <laughs> but it just works really well, and you can use whatever solder you want. Um, obviously it doesn't have to be rosin core, but, you know, that's probably what you'll have. Um, 
you just use plain solder with no core because you've already got the flux there, I suppose. And uh, you just sort of solder it and just thing. And it actually is really quick. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So enough talking about it anyway, I suppose. I've been uh, sort of going on. Um, oh yes, and then this is to uh, clean it up afterwards. Because once you've tinned the board um, using that method, it'll come out really, really shiny. And it's kind of hard to work on after that because it'll just be really shiny. Um, so it's a good idea to take some of these pot scouring pad things, the uh, non-metallic ones, because you can get the uh, steel wool, um, not advisable because that's obviously made with steel, it will rust, it may leave fragments of steel in your board and then that'll just start rusting and that's not very good. So I use the synthetics um, stuff here, so there's a sort of green, I don't know actually know what it's made of, but and some sort of non-metallic synthetic thing, I believe, um, and that'll just sort of, I wouldn't say buff it, I guess it will unbuff it, it'll make it Take the shine off it anyway, make it more matte so you can uh, find it easier to work on without reflecting glare in your face all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, what I'll do, um, obviously now that I've uh, talked about that and hopefully um, not confused the hell out of you, um, I will actually get around to doing that. So uh, I'll just uh, change the camera angle and I'll show you a good close up of how this works because it's uh, really quite a good method, I think. Okay, so I've got the board here, I've um, cleaned it all up. Um, there were some finger marks on it before from me doing the drilling and all that, but um, I just cleaned those off with the uh, scouring pad as I showed earlier. Um, that's also a good way to really get off uh, the surface sort of oxidization if it's not too deep. It's uh, probably faster than sandpaper actually. Um, works quite well. Anyway, so I'm going to take the uh, solder flux here. This is the uh, paste flux stuff. Um, just this sort of pasty flux. Um, obviously you want to do this uh, whole thing on top of some cardboard or something, uh, or newspaper or something, because this flux will kind of get everywhere. Um, so we're just going to put some on this uh, brush here, and just sort of brush it all over the uh, board basically. And it's not that hard to do, but like I said, if you heat the board a little bit with hot air or something first, then it'll make it easier to spread, but it's not a big deal. You can just uh, basically you just need to get it all over the uh, all over the copper. As long as it's all over the copper, then uh, that's all you need. And this brush seems to be disintegrating, but all right, that's okay. Um, you don't have to worry too much about putting it on perfectly because once the soldering iron gets near and it'll all start melting and going everywhere anyway which is um, the whole point but basically just coat all the copper surface um, with this stuff Now these larger areas, like this bit over here, that's uh, going to take a bit longer to do. Um, I mean, when you put the iron on it, it'll heat up slower, so... That's uh, something to take a note of. Anyway, that should be good enough. Just get rid of this uh, bristle here, and uh, that's that. So now we just take our solder. Um, I'm using this stuff here. Uh, this Kaizy Kaizy stuff. It's supposed to be a uh, 6040 tin lead, which I bought from eBay, really cheap, but it was. Uh, it's actually some sort of lead-free stuff, and it's got some really awful flux in it. Um, so it works uh, quite well for this, because we've already got some decent flux on the board now. Um, and if I take my soldering iron, basically you just uh, start melting it onto the tracks. And then just sort of swiping it around like this. And sort of just colouring everything in, basically. Um, 
Obviously this will create a lot of smoke, so I'll turn on my extracting fan, which you might be able to hear. Um, and yeah, you just sort of get your solder on there and Someone's got enough heat and you've got enough flux. Just uh wipe it on, don't get it too thick. Um Well, I mean it doesn't matter if you get it thick, but it's uh if you cover the holes you have to sort of <coughs> poke them out with a uh pin or something, but that's not too bad. It's not such a big deal. But yeah, you just sort of uh go at it with this, and like I said, the great thing with this is you can use pretty crap solder as well. You don't have to use good stuff, you can use the cheaper stuff you can find on eBay, and if the flux in it's awful, which is uh unfortunately what is wrong with a lot of the uh really cheap solder is the flux is really bad. So if you try to use this normally as normal solder, it doesn't even work properly. Um, but for this, we've already got some good flux, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm not too happy with the fact that eBay seem to like to um, fake their solder, um, pretend that it's tin lead when it's actually lead free. It's not really that useful. Um, but it doesn't really matter for this still works. You just have to use a higher temperature and be aware that uh, it'll sort of act a bit differently. It sort of sets, I say sets, but you know, it, it goes from the liquid to the, uh, hang on, I'll take this label off. That's better. It goes from the uh, liquid to the um, to the solid form quite faster compared to uh, actual lead solder, which stays sort of semi molten, semi liquidous um, for a longer time, which can be useful in some cases and a good way to get cracked solder joints and others depending on what you're doing with it so yeah but after a while you know I'm, I'm probably actually putting too much solder on to be honest um, at this point but you know just to keep the uh, once you get the the angle of the tip right and you uh, go fast enough it's uh, it's really quite simple just to get the um, get everything tinned so yeah I mean I, I find this to be a lot cheaper and ultimately easier than than doing it um, with a uh, chemical method, which is a lot more expensive. Um, I'll just try and do one of these large large tracks here to show you that it's not as easy, um, especially with this lead-free solder. But as long as you keep the heat on it, I mean, it'll start sort of going a bit funny um, in the middle, and that's where you kind of it is useful to have a uh, bigger tip or a more powerful iron, but I can just turn the heat up when I do these ones. Or you can even use hot air as well to assist with it. But yeah, um, it's fairly simple. I suppose, arguably, it might wear your iron tip out faster than usual, slightly. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. I mean, um, if you're really worried, then I suppose just buy a really cheap, cheap second iron if you want to do this a lot. Um, you know, one of the standard Hacker clones, 936. Um, you can get those all over the place, eBay, and you can get spare tips for those really cheaply, like a dollar each or less even. So, you know, if you're worried about it, just buy a cheap iron like this and buy 20 spare tips or something and. I mean, you probably won't even need that many anyway. 
I've been doing this for quite a while with this one and it's still perfectly fine, so um it's not a problem. And yeah, this is gonna be a little bit rough and it's not gonna look as good as if you used a um wave soldering or hot air solder leveling or whatever and it's not gonna be perfect and all that, but for prototyping or one offs or DIY stuff, I mean I personally find it pretty good, so this is what I use. Um yeah, as long as you got the uh you got a well ventilated area or an extractor fan or something. I've just got a little bench top fume extractor that I sit on here. I don't usually use it um when I do it when I'm doing my videos because I'm usually not soldering that much that it matters. I just have the window open and a desk fan going, blow it away. But when I'm doing this and there's a lot of flux, or if I'm doing a heavy soldering session or whatever, I, I will use it. It's a good idea, you don't want to breathe the flux fumes in too much. But yeah, um that's uh pretty much it I guess. Um, I probably won't show the rest of this. So, yeah. I suppose the only one thing you've got to sort of watch for is uh, when you do heat up the board, the glue that holds the copper to the um, substrate uh, does weaken slightly um, with heat. So um, if you do have fine traces, it's worth to uh, not do, not give too much pressure, um, and don't heat them up too long, but obviously the uh, the finer they are, the quicker they'll heat, so the less you'll have to have to worry about them anyway. So, so not a huge a huge deal. But yeah, it works. I suppose ultimately this does take longer than um, doing the chemical method, but hey, if you're not doing a huge amount of boards, then it's fine. I'm actually probably adding a lot more solder than I need to. It's just uh, faster like this. If you use leaded solder, it's uh, much easier. You don't have to worry about the solder solidifying um, as quickly, so you can use less of it.
Um, if you do go too slowly, um, you will sort of use up all the flux, or at least uh, sort of melt it away from from where it is, and you may have to add some more or, or whatever, but if you go fairly quickly it's not a problem. If you do fill in a hole, like say this one here, um, you just get your, uh, you just go afterwards, wipe your iron tip off, and just sort of touch it to the uh, pad and get it in the hole, and then it'll open it up basically. Um, it's not too difficult. But you don't need to really worry about that while you're actually doing this. You can deal with that when you're assembling the board later on. I'm also uh, trying to have a race against my camera battery again. It's been going for 17 minutes and it uh, started flashing the uh, low battery sign at me. Um, about three minutes in, so I don't think it's totally flat, but its uh, voltage has obviously dropped a little bit, so um, it just thinks that it is. But I think I do need a new battery for this thing. I uh, got it second hand and it never held a charge um, for a decent length of time really. I think it's quite uh, old and doesn't have much capacity left. There we go, that's pretty much it. Doesn't look amazing, you will get better results with a hot air leveled machine if you can afford one, but I'm going to guess if you're doing this at home you can't, so doing it this way is uh, probably your best option. And if you have any solder spikes you can just sort of drag them around um flatten them off afterwards but yeah that's pretty much it so was that 
20 minutes for one board, probably less because uh, ignoring me talking about the flux and the solder at the start, but that's it. Um, all finished, all tinned. So, um, yeah, all I have to do is just uh, clean all the flux off, just use alcohol or whatever. Um, and then you can, uh, well, I don't really need to um, scratch it up with the uh, scouring pad because it's already uh, lead free solder, so it's not very shiny, it doesn't really matter. It's um, good enough to work on as it is. If I was using leaded solder, then I probably would um, do that. But actually, this one in particular is um, its already kind of dull. Oh, hang on, there's a bit in the corner that I've uh, missed a little bit of. You might miss a bit here and there. Um, but the good thing with this is you can touch it up while you're soldering the components on anyway. So, yeah. So that's it. Um, I'll just put this uh, salt fume extractor thing away. Um, basically, sucks things, uh, sucks the smoke up into a uh, sort of charcoal carbon activated filter or whatever you want to call it. Um, certainly has a good uh, effect of um, visually removing the smoke. I don't know uh, how effective it is in actually removing the smoke particles, but I suppose if you can't see them, well, it's done something anyway. Um, yeah, so that's. Uh, Certainly something um, worth having if you're doing um, a lot of soldering or especially if you're doing this with a lot of flux. So there we go, I've uh, finally finished this board I suppose. Um, it's all drilled, it's all etched, it's all tinned, it's all everythinged. Um, no solder mask obviously, no uh, silk screen or anything like that, but um, something like this you don't really need it anyway, at least I don't really need it and I don't really care. So um, you can do that yourself uh, if you wish, but obviously having no tools or materials to do that I can't show you how. Um, I'm sure there are other videos available online that can um, give you that idea. Um, it is possible, but it is quite expensive. Uh, you can do silk screen um, with toner transfer method, just a get the silk screen, print it out, do it, transfer it, it'll stick to the top of the board as well as the copper, so um, you can do that and put the TRF over the top and if you want a different colour well, you can leave it black. Um, obviously it won't stand up to any solvents when you're cleaning the board, it um, will chip off fairly easily, it's not as good as an actual silk screen, but you know it's better than nothing if you want one. Um, yeah, I mean you could get a proper silk screen and some proper paint ink or whatever and, and do it that way, but yeah that would be quite expensive. and um, I'm not going to worry about that myself. So, yeah, but apart from that though, it's um perfectly usable board. It's all tinned. It's not going to corrode or anything anytime soon. Um, yeah, it's a little bit rough, I guess. You know, there's a few sort of solder solder blobs and, and minor spiking around here and there. But, you know, overall though, the um, thing has worked pretty well. And it's a fairly effective method. It's cheap. It's fairly quick. And it's pretty basic and just works. So... You know, for one-offs, prototyping and that sort of thing, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's probably the best method you can get. Um, you just need this uh, flux and some cheap solder. It doesn't even have to be good solder, just whatever. Um, as long as this flux is alright, then uh, you should be fine. Um, it's worth mentioning, though, I guess, afterwards when you're cleaning this flux off, um, it does leave quite a, quite a thick layer, so... It uh, will make it easier if you wipe the bulk of it off with a paper towel or a tissue or something. Um, and then get the rest off with solvent or whatever. Um, I suppose the other, the other thing is uh, obviously once you've done this um, is to inspect the board, make sure there's no solder bridges, make sure there's no um, spikes going from one pad to another or anything. Um, you don't want any short circuits or anything. Some of them, um, it'll be fairly obvious I think uh, with this kind of thing because everything's fairly well isolated already but um, it is possible sometimes to get really, really fine spikes that are quite almost unnoticeable and um, can cause havoc. So, you know, do a good uh, inspection after that, after you've uh, finished, just, just to be sure. But, you know, this one's done. This one's fine. So, that's that. Uh, that uh, concludes my little quick series on how to make a printed circuit board at home. Um, I will... Uh, probably do some more videos on this subject at a later date, um, specifically 
to do with the uh, photosensitive resist method using the UV sensitive resist. Um, obviously I'm not I don't need to make a board using that at the moment so I won't be doing that um, right now but when it comes time to do that um, I will make a video of that uh, to show that method as well but again if you need to look at that right now then there are other videos available I'm sure um, but I do intend to do one at some point uh, just for the fun of it so yeah this is uh, pretty much done and now all I have to do is assemble the thing and uh, that's it so now I can finally get back to actually um, making the power supply now that I've uh, took a little detour for um, a month or so, or whatever it was, uh, just to make the circuit board. Uh, things do move slowly um, here, and uh, even slower when you're trying to film everything. Um, normally this wouldn't take me this long, but to take into account all the filming and everything and editing, it uh, ends up being a bit, more, a bit longer than usual. But yeah, that's it for this one. Um, hopefully it was entertaining or informative or enjoyable in some other way. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time.